All right, this is one of the last podcasts of the unit, and we are just going to finish out page 15. Hopefully in class you did questions 9 and 10 at the top of this page. If you didn't, if we didn't have time for it, we will do those together. You do not need to do questions 9 and 10 to earn your stamp next class, but you do need to at least attempt question number 7 at the bottom. I'm not going to set that one up at all for you. you. I need to see something in that space, not blank, in order to get your stamp on uh, our next class. So let's go ahead and start by... Looking at these metric prefixes, you need to know these specific four metric prefixes. And before we start talking about those prefixes specifically, I want to make sure to clarify. We talked about base units last class as units that we can directly measure instead of derived units. These base units are actually a little bit different than those base units. I know it's confusing. We use the same words. But here, a base unit is a unit that has no prefix on it, like meter instead of centimeter or kilometer or grams instead of kilograms or centigrams or nanograms. Because yes, we can put these prefixes in front of any units. Even though you don't know what a mole is, we have a thing called millimoles and nanomoles. We can put these prefixes in front of any unit that doesn't already have a prefix in it. And so... When you're looking at this table of these prefixes you need to memorize, you do need to memorize the number that we have for each prefix as well as the symbol that you should be looking for that tells us we have that prefix. And we're going to need to also have you recognizing that kilo is 10 to the 3. We're going to have to have you write out a little short equation, it's these unit equations, that's going to help us when we're using them in some dimensional analysis. And this general format that I have here can kind of help you as you're writing out those unit equations. The number that's in this table, again, okay, we focus on kilo, then 10 to the third or a thousand of that base unit, let's say meter, is equal to one kilo meter. Notice how I have the same unit here for this u, but on this side of our equation, I have the prefix with that unit. So we can say that 10 to the 3 meters equals 1 kilometer, or if we use the prefix or the unit gram, then 10 to the 3 grams equals 1 kilogram. It's the same number and the same prefix uh, symbol there can be used to write multiple different short little unit equations. So, and we're going to use these unit equations in some dimensional analysis. So in the future, we might not tell you these metric prefixes. You're required to know them, and you're required to recognize when you need them in different problems. So let's go ahead and practice writing out the conversion factor, the kind of unit equations for a couple of different problems that we might end up working out. And in general, when you're seeing questions like this, and we've kind of taken out the rest words in our word problem, but it might say something like, if I have three kilograms of apples, how many grams would that be? And I've just taken that and written, okay, we're going from kilograms to grams. And so kind of pulling out the important information from a word problem, just kind of simplifying it down. And notice how both of them have this grams part. This one has a K in front. So that tells us that we have the prefix kilo going on here. And then because there's nothing else other than a G here, this is our base. So we're going to write an equation going from the kilo prefix to the base. And all we need to do, just like what we just uh, wrote up above, is take our little kind of shortcut here and since we only had one prefix in this problem in this situation we only need to write one unit equation so that's going to be 10 to the third which is the number for kilo and then we're gonna say the plain old gram equals one of the prefix kilo with that same unit gram so instead of that u we're replacing it with whatever unit we saw that was the same here in the conversion that we were doing. So 10 to the third grams equals one kilogram. And that unit equation would help us do the dimensional analysis we need to solve that problem. 
when you look at this next problem, we can see that both of them have m in common. So that's our meter as our base unit. But both of these m's have another letter on it that are not the same. So this is going from our kilo prefix unit to our nano unit. And so because we have two prefixes here, we're going to need two unit equations to be able to do this conversion. We need an equation for each prefix that we have in that problem. So even though this is meters, our kilo um, equation is going to be almost identical to the kilo equation we wrote up top. We're just going to be substituting in a meter as our unit instead of grams. So all that has changed here is the unit we're dealing with because both of these were both kilo here so the rest of that equation looks the same. Now I need to write an equation with our nano prefix in it and the number that goes with our nano is 10 to the negative 9 and then we put our base units that's our m still and then that's equal to one prefix unit. So 10 to the negative ninth meters equals 1 nanometer. We're going to do the same thing here on number 3. We find the part that's the same, and that's our base unit. And because each of these has another part, a little m and a little c, then we're going to be writing two prefix equations to help do this conversion. Our little m is milli, our little c is centi. So two equations we haven't written yet, but we follow the same process. Millie's number is 10 to the negative 3, and then we're going to put our base unit here, liters, the part that was the same between both, and then let that equal to 1 milli of that same base unit. And then our centi equation, centi's number is 10 to the negative 2. We put our normal unit here, then say that it's equal to 1 of the prefix centi with that same unit. So 10 to the negative 2 liters equals 1 centi liter. So those are the unit conversions we're going to use in order to do some dimensional analysis down below. But the first step is always first memorizing some of these numbers and symbols in the table and being able to come up with these unit equations to help us as we're setting up our dimensional analysis problems. So like I said before, here we're going to work out these three problems and then you're going to be doing this last one on your own, which I'll help you out getting started with it, but it's going to be on you. So here we start having some numbers because we are going to do full conversions. But just like in our last set of problems that were pretty minimized, we need to look for the part that's the same. I'm going to be turning my 25 seconds into some little m seconds, some milliseconds. So recognizing that I have one prefix here, and that's our milli prefix, I'm going to need to write a milli equation. And if I look at my table, milli is 10 to the negative 3. And then I put my base unit equals to one of the milli unit. Um, I don't know why I went for liters, um, but milliseconds are a thing. So this should be the only conversion factor that we need in order to be able to do this dimensional analysis. And now the only extra step we have is to start with that given and then use this red equation in order to do this conversion factor. And if I have seconds on top, our diagonal rule says I need to put my seconds on the bottom. So because the number that went with our seconds was 10 to the negative 3, we put 10 to the negative 3 on bottom, and then 1 millisecond can go on top. Remember, this is just the fraction form of this unit equation that we were writing out from that table, and I just decided to keep the seconds on bottom to follow that diagonal rule about how we set up and solve dimensional analysis problems. Now when you get to class, I will show you how to put in numbers like this in your calculator to help you set up and solve these problems. But when I've done this, and 25 divided by 10 raised to the negative third and times 1, I got 2500025000 zero, 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 as my answer. And the great thing about that 
is usually since we're just multiplying and dividing by factors of 10, it's just moving the decimal around. So I've got my same two sig figs that I needed here as long as I do not put the decimal at the end. And so all I'm missing now is my unit, milliseconds. In this next one, if we look at the units that we're dealing with, we have nanometers and meters. The meters, the M part, is the same. So there's only one prefix here. I only need to write one equation, our nano equation. So there's 10 to the negative ninth meters in one nanometer. Using that table at the top of the page to write a unit equation. And then we can just start setting this up. 352 nanometers is our given. So when I'm deciding which part to put on bottom, since I have nanometers on top, I need nanometers from my equation to go on bottom. So I'm putting my one nanometer on bottom, 10 to the negative ninth meters on top. That's set up, it's getting me the meters that I want. So if I plug this into my calculator, I get 0 0.000000, that's six zeros there, 352. Now, if you did want to write that in scientific notation instead of writing all of those zeros, or if you want your calculator to turn it into scientific notation for you, this would be the number that it would give you, and this would be in meters, of course. So either way, that's the same number, just looks a little different depending on whether you want to write your zeros out or not. And then in this last example that I'm going to do, if we look at our units, notice they both have grams. Grams is our base unit. But now we've got nanograms getting turned into kilograms. We have two prefixes here. So we're going to need to write two equations and solve this problem in two steps in our dimensional analysis. So our nano equation is going to be basically the same as what we wrote up top. It's just going to be nanograms instead of nanometers. And then we're going to go ahead and write that same kilo equation we've written a couple of times. 10 to the 3 of our plain old grams equals 1 kilogram. And if my given is that 5.30 times 10 to the 14th nanograms, then trying to get my nanograms on the bottom here, we're going to put 1 here with the 10 to the negative ninth grams on top. And then I didn't want grams, I want kilograms. So I'm gonna have to keep going. And because I've got my grams here in my purple equation as well, I can put that part on bottom and then put my one kilogram on top. So just doing two conversions and they link up through that base unit. Everything can get to the base. So if you've got two prefixes, you're not just gonna go straight from one to the other. You're probably gonna make a stop in the middle at the base unit before you come out to that other prefix unit. And this comes out to be 530 kilograms. I do wanna keep three sig figs, so I just need to put that decimal point at the end. And that's our answer here. So on this next problem, it's a little more complicated. Yes, there's more words, but our given is here, this 1,650 meters, and we're trying to find this in feet. So we're trying to get to feet. And it did give us a little bit of a hint here. It wants us to use this conversion factor that gets from centimeters to inches. But you should be able to notice that doesn't, that's not going to get us all the way there because I can't use that right off the mat bat if my given is meters. This has centimeters here though, so there might be a way to get from our meters to our centimeters. Maybe an equation that you could write that would tell us how many meters in a centimeter. And after we get those meters changed into centimeters, sure, we can turn centimeters into inches, but inches isn't what we want. We want feet. But hopefully you know something about our inches and our feet that can help us get the rest of the way. So this is my clue to you. You're going to need two more conversion factors, two more equations in order to be able to solve this. This is going to be a three-step problem if we're doing this correctly. So when you get your answer out, 
your answer will end up being something in the 5,000s if you've done it correctly. And if not, we can start with this problem in class.